Click, listen, enjoy. Broadcasting live worldwide. Thank you for tuning in to Talkline Network Radio, America's longest running Jewish broadcast network, the voice of the Jewish community. You're listening to Talk Line with Zev Brenner, America's premier Jewish broadcast on the air since 1981. And now your host. Welcome back to the program, Mom Zev Brenner. To Jerusalem we go. With us right now is Professor Samuel Hallman, Emeritus Holder of the Harold Prozhansky Chair in Jewish Studies at the Graduate Center and Distinguished Professor of Sociology at Queens College of the City University of New York. He's written quite a few books, including many on the Hasidim and their way of life. Professor, good to speak with you again. Nice to talk to you. You ri- you've written a fascinating article in the Haaretz newspaper, which the headline was, Trump lawyer David Schoen shames Orthodox Jews like me. I am familiar with David Schoen's navigation between Jewish observance and public life, but my empathy with him is transient as Donald Trump's lawyer, instead of honoring Orthodox Jewish identity, is debasing it. Why do you believe that to be so? Well, I give all the details uh, in the article, but... Uh Basically, I felt that uh, it was a combination of what we would call Kiddush Hashem and Chilul Hashem. The Kiddush Hashem was clearly his desire to publicly announce and uh, and the request uh, that he be allowed to uh, observe Shabbat and not continue in the trial until then. Um, the the part that uh, and even though he withdrew that request, the part that I find more difficult is uh, that while uh, observing Shabbat uh, and, and leading a, a professional life is a positive thing, the negative part of it is that there are many other values of orthodoxy uh, that include uh, attitudes about um, uh, values and morality and uh, and um, not supporting the idea of separating children from their parents. You're talking about Donald Trump, President Donald Trump. Well, I'm also talking about the fact that uh, he uh, bragged about uh, also uh, defending people who were mobsters and Russian mafia and uh, was on the verge of, uh, of representing um, uh, Epstein. Um, and... Um, uh, I think that uh, uh, every uh, Jew who is publicly being Jewish and demonstrating his uh, attachment to halakha and Jewish tradition and Jewish observance becomes a model. And I don't think that the model, uh, while I'm very happy that the model of his uh, uh, wearing a kippah, although he decided not to wear it in the Congress, and his model of... Uh, uh, observing Shabbat, although he withdrew that claim. That's very nice. But on the other hand, uh, I don't want him to be a model to say that Orthodox Jews support and defend the kinds of uh, behavior that we've seen uh, former President Trump uh, associated with. Everything from his 22,000 lies, from his inciting the riot, from his... Uh, not allowing for asylum uh, from his separating the children from their parents, uh, innocent children, putting them in cages at times and not even knowing where the parents have gone so that these children can't be reunited with them. Many things that I think that Orthodoxy and Yiddishkeit uh, don't condone. And the, the Torah is filled with all kinds of uh, moral lessons, and uh, I'm not just talking about the general thing of tikkun olam that people often bandy about, but I'm saying the hafta metager, you should love the stranger. Uh, um, uh, the, you know, uh, uh, do good, and uh, uh, the truth is that America was a malchut of chesed, uh, and many American Orthodox Jews have said that many times. But I think under the man that he's defending today, or I don't know when you're going to play this, but uh, defending in the Congress, in the Senate, 
uh, he has turned the Malchut of Chesed to quite the opposite of Chesed. I don't think we could... But, Professor, describe. some of these policies with immigration, and we're going to digress, is started under the Obama years. So, and to, and well, uh, the Obama years didn't separate, number one, didn't, didn't they separate... They did, they did. They, they did separate. And, 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 they, they, and, and they didn't uh, uh, try to end asylum as we know it, and they didn't force people to remain in... Um, in Mexico while they were applying for asylum. And uh, they uh, were trying to support the idea of DACA, the, uh, the so-called dreamers, uh, children who were brought to the United States, uh, people who were brought to, brought to the United States as, as children and who basically knew no other place. And these people were going to be uh, uh, sent back to countries that they'd never lived in. People, uh, there was an extraordinary case that I just heard about, about a woman whose uh, husband was murdered in Guatemala, whose uh, one daughter was raped. And if there was ever a case for asylum that could be accepted, she was turned down for asylum because she hadn't been raped. And she, her, the daughter who remained with her hadn't been raped. And she hadn't been murdered. Now, I don't think that was the rule under... President Obama. I'm sure you can find cases like that under Obama because well, they started way before. But here's I think the here, challenge here, is to find them. No, okay, I, I believe you can find. I can tell you stories about American citizens. Uh, I, I know of one case, and it was during the Obama years, where somebody was in a prison in in a foreign country, um, and he was there with the authorities here in the States, had him arrested in the foreign country in order to break him. I can tell you stories about that. That took place well, under you know, the Obama uh, years. Uh, so uh, that, that's no prior. There's no I proof. Came, I came to the United States as a refugee. My parents were refugees. A legal refugee, right? You came in legally. We came, we came as displaced persons because the president of the United States at that time, uh, Mr. Truman, um, helped pass an act that allowed people who were refugees, Holocaust refugees, among others, to come into the United States. They removed the barriers. But uh, the truth is that had they not done that, I'd have been in exactly the same position as many of these people. And I think it's so we should change the rules of this country, just like there were rules that allowed you to come in. And my mother came in, who also a Holocaust survivor, yeah. came but into this country. Mr. Trump was not willing, and the Republicans have been totally unwilling to change those rules. We'll but, see what know, happens uh, under a Biden we're administration. Moving, we're moving a little uh, from. Uh, I, I don't. I don't think that the only immoral thing that Mr. Trump did uh, had to do with uh, uh, the questions of asylum. That's certainly one of the. But here's. Big ones but here's the key. But he, here's the key question, Professor Heilman, is that yeah. a lawyer is supposed to represent clients, and most That's clients it. that come to a law, or I shouldn't say most, a lot of them may not be the yeah. finest citizens. They may be criminals. Some of them may be innocent. Some yeah. of them are innocent. That's Isn't that what a lawyer is supposed to do? Represent people? Give them without being prejudiced and say, listen, absolutely I'm going to judge you true. guilty? That's absolutely true, but we also know that the criminal lawyers can choose the people that they want to represent. And most criminal lawyers don't choose to represent mobsters and thugs and sex abusers and immoral individuals and uh, and and liars so uh, you know uh, look i'm not saying that that these people shouldn't have a defender i'm just saying that for an orthodox jew to choose to defend those people particularly in a case where every other lawyer just about seems to have dropped out of the opportunity. I just think that it disturbs me as an Orthodox Jew, uh, particularly a modern Orthodox Jew, which I see uh, Mr. Schoen as representing. And I'm sure that he's a very good Jew in many other respects. But for me, I think that kind of representation is the opposite of a Kiddush Hashem. But a, a so, lawyer, should a lawyer be saying, you know, I'm going to judge you if I'm going to take your case. If I think no. you're guilty and you've done some terrible things, I'm not going to represent well, no, you. No, there, there, there's, uh, the truth is that the, uh, many lawyers, if they come to the conclusion that their uh, clients are guilty, then they choose not to represent them. And the truth is 
that there are only certain lawyers who are willing to represent the kinds of people that Mr. Schoen has. But you're putting in the league with neo-Nazis and Ku Klux Klaners and people who, where, where Jewish lawyers got into trouble in years past for defending I, neo-Nazis. I am not, I'm not saying that uh, there aren't people who will find what Mr. Schoen is doing is perfectly respectable and will argue as you are that, well, everybody needs a good lawyer. I, I talk about that in the article, you know. It's very careful. I'm not going to read aloud the article, but I suggest that before people question my thinking and my motives and my position, rather than simply relying on this sort of secondary conversation that we're having and that they might be hearing on the radio, the first and most important thing to do is to read what I wrote. Because when you are a writer, it's not only the ideas, but the way you put those ideas. And every word that you say is a part of. Uh, can you hear me still? Yes. Uh, go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Every every word that you say is a part of uh, your argument, and uh, therefore it seems to me that um, I mean I, I I could very easily open for you and read that uh, that article as well. Uh, but I don't think that that's. No, really I, what, I, I've, uh, I've read the article I and I make yeah. a distinction. I, I, I know you've read the article because you got in touch with me. I don't know that necessarily the people who have read the art, uh, who are listening to the program, have read the article. That's my concern. So, no, um, so we're giving people the gist of what it's about. Then I understand where, well, what, yeah, what you're but saying. You know, the gist, the gist uh, I often said to my students. Uh, when I ask them to explain an article, it's not to boil it down, but to unpack it. So uh, I, I hate to to uh, boil it down. Um, uh, it, it's true. I mean, I, I just want to say that that uh, Trump should have selected an Orthodox Jew to defend him when he ran out of defenders is no surprise, because Orthodox Jews have been among his most fervent supporters, unlike the large majority of American Jews who voted for Biden. And including uh, many in the Orthodox and the modern Orthodox Jewish community, yes, too, even absolutely. a little less than the Haredi community. I, I say that. Yes. And uh -huh. I know that there will be many uh, in my synagogue and in, in other Orthodox places who will say that, um, no, no, I'm wrong. I think that it's a, uh, it's a, uh, uh, it's not a Chilul Hashem because, as you've argued, um, but I, I can't, I, as personally, as an observant Jew, can't identify with someone who thinks that observant of the Sabbath uh, and holding his hand on his head while he's uh, making a uh, drinking water or whatever, but who has uh, cruelly separated the, the asylum seeking children from their parents, who's making it nearly impossible for any endangered stranger to find sanctuary in the United States, uh, from turning it from a Malchut Chesed into a, a place for no persecuted stranger. I don't find pride in that. Uh, I do. I do find pride in the first part of what he did, but I don't find pride in that. And, 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 he, and he made it very clear in your rock. But here, here's my question for you. And I think we're changing. It used to be a liberals always pointed to the American Civil Liberal Liberties Union, where they say they represented anybody. They represented Nazis' right to march in Skokie. And there's, even if I hate their opinion, I'm going to fight for the freedom, you know, of speech, etc. Today, that's right. changed. The American Civil Liberties Union won't defend people who they disagree with. There was well, a time when they not, did. We've changed. That's, that's not true. They still do that. I'm not sure. And I think there's been a change. We're talking about freedom of speech, you know. Uh, it's, it's that question of uh, is it freedom of speech to yell, uh, falsely yell fire in a, uh, in a uh, theater, as they say? There's a difference between f freedom of speech and incitement. There's a difference between libel and freedom of speech. Not everything that people say uh, is, uh, falls under, I think, the rubric of freedom of speech. But I'm talking about a moral position, not necessarily a legal position. Many of the people with whom I pray in the synagogue will point out that everyone, as you did, deserves a good lawyer and a powerful defense. Mobsters, thugs, and even an impeached president accused but of... But putting them in the same league as mobsters and, and thugs, so that's where people well, are going to find issue with you. Well, uh, you know, I, I think there are many people who feel that the, the folks that uh, Mr. Trump unleashed uh, on January 6th 
And if you've watched any of the films and, and watched the impeachment proceedings, the trial. Half the country are, agree uh, with you and half the country is going to disagree with you. Those that support well, a Trump know, will that, disagree. Right now, right now, the uh, the the uh, polls show that about 70 percent of America believes that what happened on January 6th was done by thugs. Now, it's also true. And, and by the way, that's that true. I, I agree with you. It's done by thugs and hooligans and, and, and misfits, etc. I know, and, and I think... Uh, the question only I, is if, if they did it at the direction of President Donald A. Trump, whether they did it from the know, Proud Boys or not, that's going to be the issue. Well, I think it's pretty clear with the, the timeline and uh, the fact that they quoted as they were... Uh, uh, breaking in and maiming people and killing people and seeking to hang uh, Vice President P Pence and to shoot a bullet through Nancy Pelosi, uh, that they were doing this by quoting exactly what Mr. Trump had said to them from everything from... I don't think uh, Donald Trump did not say hang uh, the Vice President, he shoot Nancy Pelosi. Like, he said fight like hell. And so did the Democrats. You look at the look at the videos. Some of those same Democrats that accuse him said, "Fight like hell" on different occasions. There, there, maybe we should tone down our rhetoric in society. But if you look at the at the evidence, it's been on both sides. Have been said to fight like right. hell. Now, look, you know, we're not going to resolve. This. Yeah, yeah. I, I, but I want to get back to. to it's, the... it's clear, and nobody, I think, uh, would uh, would um, argue that the twenty two thousand plus lies and false statements during President Trump's uh, uh, presidency. He lied. You're going to find that President Biden engaged in lies. And Obama, I can show you, unfortunately, that's part of the political well, process. You the, make promises when you, when you get elected, you, and then you break uh, it. So. When you have an election where the largest number of people in all of election history in the United States voted for the winner, and you argue that no, no, it was a landslide from the other side, even though every single court found no evidence of that. And, indeed, and you're absolutely right. They didn't find it, not a single court. And that's why, you know, they include, including, including, of course, uh, uh, the uh, Republican appointees. Party. Yeah, well, there's no question. And that's why Joe Biden won the election. And anybody who said who sticks to that is sticking to a narrative and is not being realistic. And you have to go along. I think even Donald Trump came to that realization. It's not being true. And, and what he did is to send these thousands of people. And he did it all along. He said from the very beginning, he was not if he lost the election, it would have to be rigged. He said it as a kind of definition of the reality. And you know what? Event, that he's protected we, whether you you resolve. like it or not. He's it's there's a protection of free speech, and he's entitled to his that's opinion whether you speech. it's wrong or right. That's so Alan Dershowitz said that. That's not free speech. That's not a question of free speech. Well, Alan Dershowitz begs that we, we had him on the other night. He said, "Yeah, well, Alan but, but, Dershowitz but, 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 also was uh, uh, was uh, defending Mr. Epstein, and Alan Dershowitz is also someone who uh, I find it very difficult to identify with." I this want to pick. I want to pick up. I want to pick you up know, on this point. I think you need to. You need to make clear to your readers, or to your listeners, that this was. A, you wrote. A, you said this in an article, but it is an opinion piece. An opinion piece says this is how I personally feel. I want to share your feelings. My feelings are what they are. That uh, I think that by defending such a person uh, and being publicly orthodox. I find that undermines the way I understand what Orthodox Judaism is. I was always taught in yeshiva that the reason we are observant and the reason we do halakha and the reason we follow all the mitzvot that we can is be, because we believe that in doing so, we not only are doing the will of God, but it is making us better people. I was always taught to believe that we answer to a higher standard of behavior and morality and that people who don't observe that and i may be wrong that people who don't observe that don't and yet ironically i find that often uh, in the last number of years the people who i daven with don't necessarily observe that higher form of um, if you will of uh, morality 
uh, when I see, and there are many examples that disturb me. I was very disturbed by what happened in Borough Park uh, when the mob uh, led by Heshi Tischler and others behaved in what is a way that I don't think was uh, showing the best side of higher morality in Musar. I'm very disturbed when I hear people don't care about protecting others from the infections of the pandemic because they don't want to mask themselves or they don't want to be vaccinated. And they say, we know better, even though they don't necessarily know anything about uh, science or the way things are explained. Uh, I don't think that that's not something that for me makes me feel that the orthodoxy that I have practiced all my life is, has, can, can hold its head up high by people who act in this way. So let me ask this question, Professor Samuel Heilman. You are yes. a modern Orthodox Jew, a proud modern Orthodox Jew, and you and you condemn, you know, and you 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 don't like Donald Trump, and you you condemn uh, David Schoen for defending him, and you say it brings a desecration of God's name, not a sanctification of His name by His defense of him. How do you reconcile it with the fact that? Probably 88%, according to the Ami Magazine poll, support and voted for Donald Trump in the Orthodox Jewish community. Well, uh, you know, that's one of the big questions. I'm actually on a team that's trying to do some researching. Uh, there are many uh, explanations for it. Um, and they still support him. A lot of them I hear from a lot of people who supported him in the election still support him today. His, his support yeah. in the Orthodox Jewish community yeah. remains high. That's right. It remains high. And uh, I said as much in my article, but it doesn't remain high among uh, the sector of people who have tried very, very hard to maintain a kind of moral stature uh, along with their halachic observance. I'm afraid that uh, the people who often are willing to support him are willing to overlook things like his immorality and his lying and his uh, meanness. And I, I, you know, I find it hard to square my understanding of what Judaism requires of me. Would you, uh, would would that, you, would you have felt the same way, by the way? Because I find it sure. very hard to understand how evangelical Christians who claim that they care about life only, of course, when it's in the womb, not afterwards, uh, and who support Israel, but who necessarily are ready to overlook all of the things that Mr. Trump has done and that he represents. Now, would so you, I, would I you, find that difficult to understand. No, I, I hear you. The question I have for you is if David Schoen would have represented Bill Clinton in his impeachment hearings, would you have felt the same way? Well, I don't think that Mr. Clinton did anything that really, other than the than uh, his sexual behavior. He was immoral. But, you said that one of the standards you said with Donald Trump is immoral. So, absolutely, absolutely. But so, would, so would, would Doug Schoen or any Orthodox Jew who would defend the Bill Clinton be in the same league? I don't know. Uh, I know that when, uh, when Bill Clinton was uh, in a position of being uh, um, tried for uh, this behavior of his, that the most prominent Orthodox Jew in the Senate, uh, Senator Lieberman, really said that he could not condone that behavior. But I'm talking about defending him. He didn't, con and Joe Lieberman well, is a... Did, is he, a did he did not defend him. He Joe Lieberman didn't, but what about if a lawyer such as David Schoen were to defend uh, Bill Clinton, would you have the same contempt for him that you have for, for David well, Schoen of re representing Donald Trump uh, today? I think when it comes to immorality, hands down, Mr. Trump hits many more bases than Bill Clinton did. The question, not the levels. Once you're you're immoral, now I could be greatly immoral, grossly immoral, but once you reach that threshold, here, here here's the thing, though: elected officials are not elected for their morality. Look at even in but Williamsburg, you, you cover the Hasidim. I think in Williamsburg, there was a congressman who was arrested for molesting a young man. Um, and they still voted for him because, you know, they overlooked it. They looked at what he's doing for the community. This is nothing new. This is something which goes on in politics. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that you have to accept it. I, you know, I don't, I don't uh, uh, endorse the position of religion is religion and business is business. 
and that we can separate those things. I remember during the, the years of the Bernard Bergman scandal, I thought that was also, here is a man, they said, well, he's a Baltzdaka, he's a Shomer Shabbos, but at the same time, he was doing some very immoral kinds of behavior, and I found that very despicable, and I think I was not alone at that time. But that's different than when you have somebody no, from the community. You're talking, you're talking about immorality. Uh, but I'm, I'm talking and, about and, 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 and a political let's leader. Let's forget that Mr. Trump has not had what we would call charata. Not one word from him saying, well, I'm really sorry that I may have unleashed these things. Nothing. His, his, uh, his, uh, we, we love you. If he, he said, he said, I'm, and by the way, he, he condemned the January 6th riot, but if he were to come out saying he have a charata, would you have a different opinion of him today? Of Mr. Trump? Yes. Well, I think we all know that if you do tshuva, <laughs> even the biggest sin. Okay, so if he said, I'm sorry, you would have a different look at Donald Trump well, today. He'd have to really mean that he was sorry, absolutely. But we know the difference between saying uh, sorry and not having the kavana and saying sorry. It's like when he said, uh, you did it. You should go home in peace. We love you. You are very special people. You know, I don't think we can also uh, be uh, unaware of the fact that under Mr. Trump, whatever he did by moving the embassy or uh, helping uh, to facilitate peace between two countries that were never at war, uh, the, the truth of the matter is that in addition to all of those things, he nevertheless uh did not ever ever uh, change his behavior towards other people he never apologized for any of the things that he did and and I, never... and, and I would say most orthodox Jews will say listen as a personality he's he's rough he's a grub uh, you press you can use all these adjectives but i think what i'm hearing out well, here well then that's not somebody that i want to endorse but if you look that's at most politicians most I politicians look <laughs> if you want to scratch beneath the surface whether it's John F K or Bill Clinton the most popular politicians if you were to establish a morality clause then you, we would have very few elected officials that we can respect if we want to get down to the nitty gritty, I think the man who's sitting in the White House now is pretty high up there. Well, the, the, you, you speak to people on the right, and they'll tell you Hunter Biden, he was involved in China and Russia and the Ukraine, and there are all kinds of corrupt deals, and there's an investigation going on in Hunter Biden. So you may find that to, to, to bite the Biden administration. If you want to go down that road, you can find that they'll ethically challenge a lot of these elected officials. So we can talk about what we might find, but we. I think we're better off talking about what we have found. Well, and uh, I think the idea that somehow uh, if your uh, son has done something, that that necessarily is identical to your being responsible. But, but their charging is, is that he was involved and was getting money. This is what they're saying, the big guy, if you read the New York Post and the, and okay, the laptop. You know, not, I'm just saying there's, there is some not, evidence where the smoke, there's fire. I want to thank you for being here with us. Um, so we appreciate it, and I urge people to read the article. It certainly is thought-provoking. It's in Haaretz. It's called Trump Lawyer David Schoen Shames Orthodox Jews Like Me. Professor Samuel Hyman is our guest. I speak to him in Jerusalem. We appreciate you being on and look forward to the conversation. I'd love to see your research that you're doing, so we look forward to having you back again. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Talkline Radio and TV with Zeb Brenner is just phenomenal. Everybody concerned about the Jewish community should listen and watch. He has the best guests. He asks the most interesting questions. He's always so well prepared. It's talk radio and television from a Jewish point of view at its very best. To advertise on the Talkline Network and Talkline's email and social media blasts reaching over 70,000 people, please call 212-769-1925, extension 100. That's 212-769-1925, extension 100. Or email info at talklinenetwork.com. Talkline Network Radio, America's longest-running Jewish broadcast network, the voice of the Jewish community.